Press. Um, thank you for showing up today. Uh, we're here to discuss uh, the sequence of events and sort of an update on uh, allied development partners and large allied trust um, claim with respect to the voiding of the waterfront lease and development agreement. Um, you, you all recall that in October 19, 2012, the Corporation of Hamilton uh, put together an, an RFP which we entered and we were the successful applicants. Since then, um, we've had uh, legislation passed in the House of Assembly to void those contracts that we were awarded. Uh, to date, uh, in accordance with the legislation, uh, and I'll, I'll pass a copy out to the members of press, uh, the government and allied have uh, expired the 42 days worth of negotiations and uh, no compensation has been agreed on between the parties. Um, we have written to the governor and requested an arbitration panel uh, to be set up and the, the 42 days for the record had expired May 2nd, uh, 2014, so we're about a month and a week into um, trying to, to assemble this, this panel uh, to convene over the arbitration process. And part of the, 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 the reason for us showing up here today is for me to express my disappointment in the process as an entrepreneur that, uh, that set out to help to create jobs for Bermudians like myself. Um, the process was intended uh, to, to help with the economic hardships and, and you know, we, we've been all asked to do our part and carry our, our weight. And this is something that I, you know, I took personally. Uh, I invested quite a bit of my personal time and money into being able to, to assist in uh, uh, bringing back the economy in Bermuda. And I've been met with uh, you know, what I would call uh, <laughs> some severe challenges um, from the government. And now uh, I'm stuck in a process where, uh, unfortunately, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm finding it very hard to even recover um, the investment that, that I put into to getting the, 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 the contracts. So, um, as I've said, there, there is a process in which it's set out in law um, for the governor to set up a panel of arbitrators to decide whether or not my claim for the $156 million dollars, 200,000 is a reasonable one. Um, and, I, and I would like to, to emphasize that the claim that I've put in front of the government is not one of uh, my own uh, 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 judgment. I've engaged you know, what can arguably be said to be the, one of the largest and, and most reputable valuation companies in the world to assess the value of, of my claim, and I've submitted that um, in agreements, uh, verbal agreements with the Minister of, of Home Affairs. Uh, him and I had a discussion, and it was agreed that I would go to such valuator, obtain an evaluation, and the government would, would settle our claim and compensate us for the voiding of contracts. I also want to say that uh, prior to that discussion and the agreements of, 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 of me going to HBS for this appraisal, I had a, uh, a late night meeting as well with the former Premier and the, the Minister of Municipalities and Home Affairs, um, whereby it was agreed by those two parties that they would void the contracts and pay me the compensation that was owed to me. And as I mentioned earlier, the, the law allowed 42 days for such negotiations to take place. And those, that time has come and passed. And now we're in a situation where an arbitration panel needs to be set up to decide the value. Um, in that time, 
I also had numerous without prejudice conversations, which I, I probably am not at liberty to speak about now because they're without prejudice, but whereby I offered to settle with the government for a far less sum than what's um, uh, being claimed now. And none of those offers were accepted by the government. Um, and, and I did so obviously because, uh, you know, one, I want to see the process completed because, you know, it, it, it could potentially be a very long drawn out process. And, you know, it is a substantial amount of money that I understand that the government maybe cannot afford. Um, so I opted to try to negotiate in good faith with the government to resolve uh, and you know settle this issue out of court to save the taxpayers as well um, legal ex expenses. Um, but those negotiations bore no fruit, and Ally is left with no choice now but to go through the, the legal process of, of arbitration. And uh, through you know our legal counsel, we've been advised to you know to take the obvious measure, which is go for the full extent of the claim, plus damages, out-of-pocket expenses, and recover all our legal fees. Are, are there any questions? Yes. Um, do you have any questions? Okay, um, my question has to do with, um, you said that they, you engaged one of the most reputable valuation companies in the world to evaluate your claim. Did I'm not clear, did the minister and or the premier of the government agree on which company that would be? Yes. They actually agreed on yes. the company? I, I sat with the minister after I had met with the premier and the minister and we, you know, we had agreed that we'll get together after it was voided, sort of expeditiously, which he, he kept his word on. We sat and we talked and we agreed to go with HVS because of their size and, and you know, and, their reputation, um, and you know, he told me, you know, with, with no uncertain terms, that if whatever the valuation comes back at, if that's what I'm entitled to, he would pay. He was he made it very clear to me that, and I'll, I'll say this on the record, that it's not his money, and if the government voided my contract and I'm entitled to that money, he would pay me. Those are his exact words. Um, why is it that the arbitration panel has not been set up yet? I, I am not sure, and I can only speculate that due to the size of the claim, it's, you know, it's a, 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 a serious, um, and, and, and the government needs to take this very seriously, mm. on how they approach, you know, um, and, and, and how the process goes because of because of the very size of it. I I from the face of the law, the government shouldn't have any input. It should be the governor that that appoints this panel independently from the government. But you know we all know that the, you know the, the government and the governor um, work in tandem to resolve these issues. And I would take that that you know the, the governor might be taking advice from. AG's chambers or other chambers here. I, that I'm not sure, of, but but I, I, w I would say based on the size of the claim that you know it's, it's a process that I wouldn't be happy with, with the time that it's going to take for them to, 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 to set up a pound. Has the governor responded to your communication? Then? Yes, he has, but but not to to uh, to set up a pound. He's only acknowledged that that you know that we've written him. Mm. When, when was that? Um, shortly after. So I, I, I would say May 2nd was the, the cutoff date for us to reach um, uh, an agreed compensation amount. Well, we may have written him days after that. So shortly after May 2nd, we, we wrote to him and asked him or, or informed him that you know under the Municipal Act, we had 42 42 days to negotiate. Um, we hadn't agreed to, to compensation and, we're, and we would like for him to set, set up a panel. Okay. What was the amount you offered to settle with initially? 
Um, I've made a few different offers to the government. Um, the the meeting that uh, I referred to between the premier and uh, the minister, I offered, which which actually surprised me that um, that the government wasn't aware. And that's that's one of the things that that's been the most frustrating about this is that I sincerely don't feel that the government has conducted the due diligence as they should have um, in, in getting this process, you know, uh, evaluated, or, or sorry, the lease and my interest in, in this project, evaluated before they void it. Um, and we'll get into that later on about how I can confirm that. But there, there was a question raised about whether or not I can assign the leases. Um, and, and because I was very instrumental in the negotiations of the contract, I knew that they were assignable because um, that, that, you know, obviously had value to the contracts. So I was asked by the minister, were, were they assignable? And I answered him, yes. He told me to check with my counsel. I double checked with my counsel. My counsel came back and said the answer was yes. I was surprised to know that the government did not know after they revealed to the media that they received these leases in June, um, which, which on record, that, that is not actually the case. Um, they had copies of the leases in February because they asked me to, to, to give them copies of the leases, which I gave them way back in February. And it was said in the media that they only, released the, they only received those leases in June. So that, that in itself is, 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 you know, I don't know what to call it, but it, it's not the truth. Um, but I, I offered an assignment value, to get back to your question, I offered an assignment value of $17 million at that time. Now, 17. I, 17 million. And I, I, you know, I'll explain why there's a stark contrast. One, I didn't know what the leases were worth. I hadn't had a valuation. And, you know, they asked me for a number off the cuff. I gave them $17 million off the cuff. Now, I obviously have, you know, my personal liabilities and, and company liabilities. And I had done, you know, my own math and, and come up with this number. This was in February last year. Um, yes, February. Maybe February 20th, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had this meeting. I offered that the lease and, and the development agreement for the $17 million because at that time, you know, that would have sorted out the financial issues that I, you know, I was challenged with in this economy. Um, that offer was declined. Um, and my logic to presenting that was the same logic into when I presented Initially, uh, in, in September, um, I, I asked, well, I sent in a letter to the cabinet to resolve this issue under another structure, which I'll get into in a short moment. Um, but the logic was to, 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 to give them an assignable right to those leases, was that if the government thought it was necessary for them to pass retroactive legislation to extract leases from Allied, and they thought this was such an uh, important project for the country that if they had the assigned right to those contracts, they can in turn go and negotiate with another developer and assign who they wanted to assign because you know they thought the corporation had, had made a mess of it, as, as, as is alleged. So I thought if they bought it, they can go into another developer and sell the rights to that developer and recoup their money. That was the logic. So literally, of course, the taxpayer, zero. They buy it from me for $17 million, or they can even negotiate with somebody to pay me the $17 million. However it worked, the government would not bear, burden the taxpayers with the cost of these leases. That was the sole logic of, of me offering it in that manner. They declined that and voided those leases. They told me they were going to void it. I, I actually even have uh, a, a tax from the former premier confirming that they were going to be voided the next day in the house. We met Thursday night, Friday morning, he sent me a text message with the, 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 the exact language that went out to the members of parliament to confirm that they were going to do this voiding. And I have that on myself and I can show, show all of you a, a copy of it. So they, they elected to void, which means that the government is now liable for the claim. And also, which is very interesting, and I think the public need to be aware of this, is that the powers are revested into the corporation. And what I mean by that is, 
the government still does not have the right to choose who develops their property. The new legislation that they use to void these contracts say that the corporation needs to go to them or to the legislator for approval for any lease or disposition of land beyond 21 years. But the corporation can still sign a lease with somebody tomorrow if they wanted to for this waterfront for 21 years and extend the period for another 21 later on or whatever proposal they intend to put together. So really, the, the act, in my opinion, has only gotten the taxpayers on the hook to pay compensation and not really resolve the issue that's really at hand is how do we collaboratively move forward in developing this waterfront. Now, I, I know you asked me one question, but I want to say as well that on February, sorry, September the 3rd, 2013, I sent in a request um, after conversations with the Premier and the Finance Minister, and not the Finance Minister, the, the Minister of Home Affairs again, I sent in two letters, one to the Premier and to the, the other two, the Minister of Home Affairs, suggesting that they take the waterfront lease free of charge, and this was prior to the, the Thursday night meeting, that they can have them on assignment free of charge, but in consideration for support on the Polyville project. Now, you know, most people will know that I'm also involved in the Polyville project and I've been trying to get that off the ground. So as a Bermudian that has friends and family here and that's, you know, having the same financial hardships that most of my friends and family are having, I opted to offer the government that waterfront lease for zero besides financial support, which is a guarantee, to see the, the part of our project come to fruition so we can contr con uh, uh, contribute uh, to help him with the job situation and other. And that's here in writing. Two letters were sent, and I can issue a copy to the members of the press. One was sent to the Premier, and one was sent to Minister Faye. And it said that I would give up the waterfront lease for a 55 to $60 million sovereign guarantee. And I also um, um, outlined some of those benefits to help the Bermuda economy um, and create jobs for, for the government and for the country, but it was in consideration of. So that meant that if the government were to obtain this lease, they would have to provide the sovereign guarantee to support part of the bill. Now, those are two options uh, uh, that I've put on the table, and there have been more that I've put on the table to try to resolve the ongoing dispute on the value of this lease and, and how to move this process forward. Um, and I think it, it, it's very disappointing as a local businessman to make as much effort as I've made. And uh, to be frank, the government has not given me the time of the day to, 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 to try to resolve this in a manner that I personally feel that it should have been. And if there was other parties sitting at the table, um, it would have been resolved differently. With, with what's transpired to date, um, I can see that you know, and, and I've prepared myself for this case being taken all the way to the Privy Council. And it's very unfortunate because the rights to the waterfront are going to be argued over for a long time. And the, 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 you know, despite you know, my financial losses, I think the country is going to suffer the greatest because this is, this is our opportunity, as has been said many a times by you know, uh, distinguished members of, of the public, that this is the project that can bring Bermuda back. And, and the fact that it's going to be tied up in litigation for such a long time, I think that it's a, it's a, you know, it's a disappointment and, and a disjustice to the citizens of this country. Does the fact that the process is going to continue for so long restrict the corporation from issuing a new lease on the waterfront property? I, I, I can't answer that from a legal point, standpoint, but I, I, would, I would guess the answer to that is yes, because no one knows what the outcome of the, the trial is going to be. And it'll be, you know, it'll be uh, naive of, of anybody to think it's going to go one way or the other. The, the only sort of written in, in stone thing here is that there will be compensation paid, but the quantum needs to be dis determined from a panel. You've spoken of many meetings, many different offers. Are you, do you think there's something personal going on or 
why do you feel the government's refusal to, to accept any of these offers? Well, one of the reasons is that I think the government started this process with a preconceived notion that there was, you know, some bad stuff happening here or there, which they haven't been able to prove. Um, you know, I, I was questioned by the ombudsman and, you know, I had an opportunity to rebut a lot of the allegations that were made. And as you can probably tell from the ombudsman report, that um, none of those allegations were founded. Um, she had to remove every last one of them that she alleged about me out of her, her, her report. Um, so I think that they started a process and they committed to something that they couldn't turn back from. And secondly, um, that they didn't realize that it will go this far and that the claim will be as large. Because from what I've been told, that there was an agree agreement on, uh, on voiding the leases if it wasn't of any or a substantial value, uh, sorry, cost to the government. So th that was the basis in which the cabinet gave the green light to go ahead and void the leases. And that clearly, <laughs> no, isn't the case. And there's a problem that they, that they, they need to resolve. Yeah, and I've made every effort, again, in, you know, in sincerity, to try to resolve the issues with the government, and I'm, 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 I'm still willing to sit with them and resolve it if, if necessary. But it's not going to be at a disadvantage to me because, you know, I, I spent my time and my money and my effort and invested a substantial amount of money. And, you know, I took a risk just like a businessman does, which, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But in this case, I never had the opportunity to win or lose. The government stepped in and voided my contracts. I, I never had a chance you know, to get, to get out of the blocks, except for being able to raise investment money, which they're also aware of, that I had $560 million committed to this project to break ground, which would have, would have created jobs for Bermudians. And in spite of me going to them and telling them, look, you know, you guys don't have to go down this road. We can work together. What do you want to see different on this project that, you know, you can work with us, you know, we can work with John and, and whomever else, to help in this process, well, none of that was ever entertained. I never had an opportunity to, you know, to, to, to make what they perceive to be wrong, right, or, or, or even try to repair it. And I think that is unfortunate that, you know, I, I can't accredit it to, to anything specific because I don't know what the, the cause is. I can only speculate that they don't take certain people seriously. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm being you know, very frank here, that, you know, if, if you look at the two parties that signed that contract, the current council and allied development partners, and you remove either one of those people from this process, and let's say the Gosling administration, you put the Gosling administration in and you leave us, and ask the question, would they have voided that contract? The answer is no. And I'll, and I'll tell you why in a minute, and, and we'll do a second scenario. Leave the current administration in there, and put John Swan as the, the, the successful applicant, would the government have voided those contracts? And the answer to that is no. Now, I'm going back to remove an ally from the, sorry, sorry the, the current council from the situation. And I don't know about the internal workings of the, of the corporation. But I know this, that I am now the chairman of Parleville Hotel and Residence, which has a lease with the corporation. It was signed by Mayor Block, then it was signed by Mayor Gosling, a second contract. That contract was mistakenly made subject to the same retroactive legislation that the government passed in the House. So what I mean by that is that the same conditions that made the waterfront agreement subject to voiding, those same conditions made the, the Parleville contract subject to voiding. One of the reasons that I heard, because I listened to the debates in the House, was the length of the lease, 262 years. Now, if one could do some research, there's some precedent set on a government level for that amount of years. But there's also a precedent set in a corporation. And why I know that? Because I'm the chairman of Parleville. The same legislation which they use to void those waterfront contracts, the, the Parleville contracts or, or leases and development agreement or lease and development agreement had the same amount of years. 
They voided the waterfront contract for 262 years because they said it was too long. Well, if anybody reads the Parleville contracts, they're for the same 262 years and the same group of people voided one and approved the other. They also told the public that we took a lease over White Island. If I had taken a lease over White Island, they would have not needed the legislation. The contract would have been rendered void because the city would have given me permission to lease land that's not theirs. It would have been somebody else's land. Those contracts would have been void. My attorneys, Wakefield and Quinn, would have had an issue because I, I would have been talking to them because they would have drafted me contracts or approved contracts without doing a property search to know that the land belonged to somebody else. And the third reason they gave, because those are two reasons, the third reason they gave was in the embudgement report where it says that if they had an opportunity to start over, they should. That's the first line of her report on page 47. She says, if the development of Hamilton Harbor is indeed a priority of the Corporation of Hamilton government and the people of Bermuda, then ideally we should start over. That's the first line that the minister, Sylvan Richards, read in the House of Assembly to say that's why or the justification for them void. Well, conveniently, he was not told the whole story and it doesn't appear that he read the whole story because if you read the next paragraph done, this is what the ombudsman says in her report as well. The massive hiccup to starting all over again is that there is no contracts in place that appear to have bestowed rights on third parties. Courts are loathed to interfere with innocent third party rights, allied development party, party's rights. Accordingly, it may first be necessary to establish whether the existing contracts are legally valid. Well, the government never took those measures. They never determined because they didn't even know whether the contract was signable or not. I had to tell them. Given the outstanding questions about the corporation's process for entering into the contracts, recommendations below, subject to this caveat, the caveat she spoke to about, about whether they're legally binding or not, should be implemented generally with respect to the development of the waterfront project. Now, if she says that these contracts, or the court said that these contracts are valid, it's quite clear in here that this was a mistaken judgment to void these contracts before they knew whether or not these contracts were legally valid or not. And the house got one line. <laughs> they didn't get the, the second part about whether or not they were legally valid and they didn't get an opportunity to determine those were legally valid. They were told in an email that I have that they were under pressure because Allied was going to sue them for damages and delays so they need to hurry up and void the contracts. That's the explanation the public of Bermuda got and also lost the opportunity to have jobs created on this project. Have you been approached by anybody on either side of the political fence in support of your charge? I, I have been in discussions with parties on both sides and there are mixed feelings. Um, the, you know, the, the PLP obviously you know, upset about the process and, and you know, rightfully so, that I, I think that they have a, a duty as the opposition to express their disappointment and, and you know, while, while I'm not uh, overly involved in politics, I, I would say, because I, I, you know, I go on record and say I've never voted one time in my life. I, I, I haven't chose to vote and I, I, because of this I probably will never vote <laughs> definitely again and, and my religious beliefs. but. I've had um, both parties come to me and, and have discussions. Um, and interestingly, there are members inside of the PLP, the OBA rather, that don't agree with the process, but they voted, or they told me that, I, I, you know, and that's just you know, what, what I've heard from them. But they still voted to vote. And, and I know that some of those people now have had discussions internally about why haven't the government paid me my compensation. And you know, they're asking the questions because I, I've asked them the questions when I see them or when I have an opportunity to talk to them. Why am I being handled in this manner? Like, what did I do? And, and, and you know, the only conclusion I can come to is that the size of the claim is too large. But again, if the government cannot afford it and they're willing to settle for a reasonable figure, which, which you know, we have to put the facts on the table. We can't just go with some arbitrary number. 
I would be more than glad to sit around the table and discuss compensation with them. How long will you wait to hear back from the government as far as an arbitration process before you go for that? Um, well, personally, because of you know my financial situation and the fact that you know that it's been a year and six months since I signed these contracts and haven't had the opportunity or the the the, the right to you know to recoup any of my investment or to develop and the government stripped me away from that right it is very frustrating and you know i want to express to whoever it is whether it's the governor or, or the government that i will continue to, to apply pressure I'm, I'm not going to just you know roll over and play dead because you know this is a david and goliath fight <laughs> you know and i'm as i said you know i have a religious background and, and you know not to sound cheesy but david took goliath out so, you know, I, I, it's been a month and I would have thought by now we would have had some response from the governor as to, you know, how he was going to direct the process to set up a panel and, and start the process because the outcome is binding. Uh, we can appeal through the court systems to go further, but, but uh, you know, I've, I've taken counsel and if the government and the governor, however, you know, the process is working behind the scenes, don't set up a panel, then yeah, we'll be obligated to go, or I'll be obligated, and, and I'll direct my attorneys to go to the Supreme Court and, and file a writ for, for our claim. And, and, you know, and express to the Supreme Court that we feel that we're, we're being prejudiced and that this is, this is unfair, that, you know, justice should not be, be perverted or delayed because of the size of the claim or, or, or you know, the individual that's making the claim. If by some weird stroke of change of heart comes about, would you still be interested in developing the project? Of course. Yeah, that's, that's what I set out to do. Um, there will obviously need to be concessions made. Uh, one of the, and, I, and I'll tell you, one of the, the approaches I made to the government within the 42 days was that they go back to the house and withdraw the, 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 the voiding. They pay me the damages that I've incurred to date and allow me to go and develop this place. I, I would have no, no problem with that if they paid me the damages that I've suffered to date and they allow me to go build and I develop and you know, whatever happens, happens. And, and in these contracts, I'll, I'll have it said that if I didn't meet specific performance requirements, these contracts would have rendered themselves void automatically. They, they weren't indefinite you know, uh, 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 for me to just hold a property for an entire 262 years and not, be, not do anything with it. The corporation just didn't give me the property, they gave me the right to develop. And if I weren't able to develop it, then my rights will fall away and somebody else will have that opportunity. So the answer is yes, I, I would definitely, you know, take the opportunity to develop it. Um, you know, if, again, reasonable consideration was given to the time that I've been delayed and the, the, the damages that have been incurred to date. Wrapping up anything else you wanted the general public to know about the situation you're in and the government? Um, one of the things I, I probably could say to, to you know the people that patronize my business, I, I you know, I would like to say thank you to those people and, and you know all the, those that I haven't been able to, to contact, I would just like to, you know, to apologize um, and ask them to, you know, to, to understand that if the situation was different. Um, things would be different with the business, and you know, and I, I appreciate what you know, what or how they've patronized the business in the past. And you know, we are going through a difficult spurt and all because of the considerable investment we made in this and the Parliament project. But it's you know, it's not only an effort to 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 help us as a company, but it's to help the island at large. I mean, with these size projects, with the amount of investment that we've been able to attract. If these projects, if either one of them were to happen, it'll help out this, this economy substantially. And, you know, even those, those people that have patronized in the, over the years will benefit from, you know, from that form of capital coming in here. Can you just give us an update on where we are with the private bill project? Currently, we, wait, uh, we await on the government to approve mortgage, a mortgage. Um, they've, they approved guaranteeing the house. Um, while the, the interesting thing is, while the guarantee was being approved, we asked them to do the mortgage as well. We've written back and told that 
the mortgage is not necessary. That um, according to the act, same 2013 municipal act, that um, the, because it's, it's, it's uh, um, a mortgage, it don't necessarily fall within the restrictions of the act, which says that any disposition of land or, or lease that goes beyond 21 years, um, it'll be an issue. Now, I wrote, I put it very candid, our concerns about the way the legislation was written and whether or not the, the lender would be able to take a mortgage over this asset. And I was written back on government letterhead saying that that's not the case. Okay, well, once the mortgage was a sorry, guarantee was approved in the House and the Senate, I went back to my lender and said, Look, I got the guarantee now, let's do business. They hand it over to their lawyers. Their lawyers come right back to us and confirm what our lawyers were saying and what we had asked the government that the mortgage is necessary as well because a mortgage is considered to be a disposition of land because if there's a default, the, the lender inherits the property. So if, if he doesn't have the right to the property for beyond 21 years, then he doesn't have freehold. So that's what's currently taking place now. Hopefully, uh, the government would, would, would finalize the mortgage and, and if it is done at the end of the month, which was promised to us, um, then we can go back to our lenders and you know we'll have a loan and, and we can get the process started. If everything follows through, what sort of time frame do you see? Um, I will predict based on you know the, the investor schedule, um, the project could potentially happen at the end of the year. If we are successful in getting the mortgage um, and closing our first loan, the unfortunately the investors take off the summer. Um, most financial institutions have a, a gap in the summer months. So we would have to probably wait until maybe September to re-engage the senior funder. Uh, so that look, you know, it'll look more like the end of the year if all goes well.